Morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Match day minus one ahead of tomorrow's game against Sweden. We've got a couple of different um, formats today. So we've got a group of journalists in the room at St George's Park, and we have um, a number of Swedish journalists joining virtually. So we will begin with questions in the room, and then we'll head across to our friends from Sweden online at the end of the press conference. Anton, we'll begin with you, please. Good morning, both. Morning. Morning. Um, Serena, let's start off, obviously, ahead of a, a big, big game. Just wondering how the squad's shaping up. Um, pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, we have um, one player going out. So Kiara uh, went back. She came in with some discomfort in her knee. So we tried to manage her, but it's not good enough. We're not going to take any risk. So um, she left and uh, Kayla Rundell's in. Um, interesting you didn't mention certain Leah Williamson there. How is Leah? We saw her training on her own on Tuesday. Is she ready and she ready to play potentially two games in a couple of days? Yeah, she, um, she, we needed to manage a little bit. She had a full training session yesterday. She'll be on the pitch today. Uh, so, that, so that looks really good. And as we know, like where she comes from, uh, she's still building, but she's in a good place and ready. If she comes through today, of course. Um, talking to some of the players in this week, they're saying it's just it just feels different when Leah's around. Is that is that true? Is it feels like you know there's it's just a different feeling when Leah's back in the camp? Um, no, not a different feeling. It's just really good that she's back. Uh, first of all, for herself because she was so exciting excited to come back um, and then that means that she's fit so it's good to have another quality player in the in the squad uh, but I think we were in a good place already and now we're in an even better place. Um, I want to ask you about one of the big talking points of the week obviously the, the Conti Cup final I know you've obviously you've sort of watched the game um, what happened on the touchlines has kind of taken more attention than what happened on the pitch so I'm just wondering what you thought about the, the, co the coach's actions and Emma talks about male aggression being a problem in the game. Is that something you share, in a, a share an opinion on? Well, first of all, of course, it was a great final. Um, very uh, competitive, so that emotion goes up. I haven't been there. I'm not uh, in that situation, so I really do not want to comment on that one day before we go to the most important game tomorrow in a couple of months for us, uh, Sweden. Fair. Lucy, good to see you. Um, First off, I just obviously talk about, we talk about the schedule a lot, the number of games that you've got coming up between now and July. As the senior player in the camp, how does it sort of compare to what you've been through previously and the demands increasing on, on the players to a point where it's actually reaching a breaking point? Yeah, I mean, obviously the demands are getting higher. I think even when I was at Lyon, it was quite high for me personally. To be honest, I had two days off from... A Champions League final into a World Cup preparation, so it's nothing that I'm not used to. Um, but I think as a player, all you can do is keep yourself prepared, keep rest and properly do the right things. Um, obviously, for me personally, I, I'm part of FIFA Pro and discussions with, uh, obviously I joined discussions with Serena, uh, FIFA, UEFA, but ultimately it's down to them to help program the calendar better uh, to for the, I guess, for the good of the game, but for the wellness of, of the players involved. How are those discussions going, Lucy? I know the calendar's locked in until 2026, which doesn't really help in the short term, but how are the discussions progressing? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth, and I think there's a lot of different opinions. Everybody's got their way of wanting to work. Um, but I think, hopefully, uh, there's ideas that can, people can come up with to maybe alter a few things, and I think a few alterations could make a huge difference um, for the players especially, and obviously my point of view is, is from a player's perspective. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anton. Go to Emma from the BBC. Thank you. Yeah, good morning both. Um, Serena, you've got some good memories of playing against Sweden, obviously in the Euros semi-finals. So, um, yeah, has there been a bit of talk about that this week and how much can you use that to, to fuel a, a positive performance? We haven't used that. That, um, that was then, and that was a great moment, but we all move on. There have been uh, lots of things happened in between that period, that time and now, and we're in this new situation now. Of course, we know Sweden very well. They know us very well, too. So we're preparing on what we have seen lately from them and what we want to do and how we want to play. Uh, so there's, that's basically what we're talking about. Yeah, you mentioned before to Anton that there's obviously a very, very important game for you tomorrow. Do you see this as something that you've been working towards 
ever since that kind of World Cup finals almost to prepare for, for, for this moment? Um, no, we've been, of course, after the World Cup final, we were preparing, um, we were playing the Nations League and we have tried to qualify uh, for, the, for the playoffs uh, for the Olympics from the moment in December that we knew um, we didn't qualify, which was hard anyway, with only two teams qualifying, in, excluding, of course, France was already qualified. We wanted to reset um, and get ready for the first game. Uh, which one is now Sweden tomorrow? And we knew we know that since the draw on the fifth, I think it was the fifth of March, um, and since then we're just really getting into Sweden, but also into Ireland because you don't prepare that in just two days. Um, we're preparing the team now for Sweden. Um, we used the camp in February, which was really good to have a reset moment, getting ready, uh, and focus fully on the qualifiers for the Euros. Yeah, Lucy, um, I know Serena says there it hasn't been a conversation about the last time you played Sweden, but I know there's been lots of videos on social media of Alessia's goal, obviously the back heel, the iconic goal in that semi-final. Just wanted for you guys as players, have you thought about that game and obviously playing at Wembley as well, does it bring back those memories? Obviously it brings back memories from the Euros. I don't think, like Serena said, funny enough, I don't think we've been specifically talked about that game. But I do think there's a nice rivalry between ourselves and Sweden um, even I know when I've been playing, even before Serena was here, we've always had a good rivalry with them in tournaments. Um, and they're a good team, a strong team, but we're very much focused on what they're like in the here and now. Um, and yeah, the fact that we're at Wembley, I think that's something that we're really excited about. Uh, we want to get all the fans back, especially with you know the previous camp we were in Spain. Now we've got the opportunity to play in front of our fans against a good team. Um, so we're very much focused on that game. And yeah, maybe the fans can kind of feel that moment of the Euros and think about those moments and hopefully it gets them excited for what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, just finally, you could come up against your Barcelona teammate, Fridolina Rolfo. Um, as a competitor, how exciting is it to potentially come up against a player of, of that quality? Yeah, it's exciting. Obviously, uh, she had to have a surgery after the World Cup, um, but she's back now, fully fit, playing at Barcelona. Um, and yeah, she's a player that I enjoy playing against in, in Barca training. She's fought strong, physical, powerful, and potentially could be a little rivalry on the pitch since in terms of our positioning, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. All the best, thank you. Thanks, Emma. Just go to Kit next to you. Hi, Serena. Hi, Lucy. Um, Serena, after kind of how last year ended with the slightly disappointing Nations League campaign, is playing a top opponent like Sweden perhaps a chance to remind everyone just how good this England team is and that it is one of the best teams in the world? Um, yes, we, we've passed by that disappointment now because we went on a camp in February and we played two games um, and the team really showed that this is who we are and this is how we want to play and really showed there was so much energy and I think the quality of our games were really good too. But we're friendlies, we didn't really approach that friendlies, but it gave us the opportunity to play many players, to see where we're at uh, as individuals, but also as a, as a team um, and how pe players are related to each other. But now it's for a qualifier. So yes, it's absolutely an opportunity for us to show, to show again uh, what we can do and how good we can play. And that's really what we want to do tomorrow. Um, and with the captaincy, obviously, with Leah coming back, just, just where do we stand on that? What's the situation? Yeah, well, we have another training session. Leah's our team captain. Um, that will not change, but we want to get through this training session first and then see what uh, final decisions we make for uh, tomorrow. Okay, so just she's the team captain, but does that mean there's a possibility that she could play but not be captain? Well, she could play. If she plays, she's the captain. We just want to get through this training session and see how she is and how the team is, and she needs that too in our environment from where she comes from. Yeah, thank you, that makes sense. Um, and then I, I know you've talked about Sunday and the incident that, that happened at Molyneux. Can I just check more generally, do you have any concerns about touchline behaviour among managers and especially male managers? Yeah, as I just said, like in general, not just this specific situation, in general, I think we, have, we are an example as coaches. I, I think we, we are all aware that we are an example for everyone who's watching, but also in society, of course, when you're being watched a lot, it's good to have good behaviours. But um, I just don't want to continue talking about this now. We have so important game tomorrow, and we're playing Sweden, and that's what I want to focus on. That's my main job right now. Mm -hmm. And just one more, just, just 
how how were the players that played in that game the final because it was obviously one an exhausting game that went to extra time and two an em emotional game for a number of reasons so how were the Chelsea and Arsenal well, players in your squad yeah they're good but I think there's so many players that have very exciting intense games uh, and many of those games uh, also Barcelona players played so many games because they had midweek games because of the Champions League then Georgia Stanford played with, with Bayern Munich she, they also played 120 minutes and had a penalty series because they played a cup game uh, last weekend so we have our team program getting and the main thing is getting everyone ready for Friday and then we individualize our scheduling as you saw uh, for example Tuesday that some of the players were not on the pitch we did some other recovery with them uh, to, to just get everyone ready and um, as we seen the training yesterday I think we are in a good place thank you very much for the best for tomorrow thanks, thanks. Kit we'll go to Tom <coughs> Thank you. Good morning, both. Um, Lucy, please, could I ask you a question that I've not been able to ask any England footballer before? What does it feel like to go into a campaign as the defending champions? <laughs> yeah, I think it's exciting. Um, obviously, we want to qualify for the Euros, and that's the, the goal with this campaign. Um, but I think the, the long goal would obviously be to win the tournament. We go into every tournament wanting to win it. But that would be a, a special part of history, to be a team that could potentially go back-to-back -back in a tournament. It's difficult in any tournament, whether it's you know, the WSL, the Champions League, but it would be a, yeah, a next level achievement to, to do that in an in a international stage. There are lots of same players who were with you when you won the Euros and, and there's lots of new faces too who've come through. I'm just wondering how you would assess the health of the squad now and how excited you are about the kind of youthful nature of some of the players coming through. Yeah, really good. And I think, you know, all the players that are coming through are, are competitive. I think um, they play at a high level. They play in really, good, in really good games week in, week out. Then we've got probably a little bit more experience than the Euros, uh, which is it's just a crazy thing to say that we've got more experience now than we did previously. We know how to win. Um, and we also have a, a standard now that England, you know, we get to finals, we want to win trophies. And all the players who come through feel that and they, they raise their game to, to that. So it's, it's really exciting, but there's still yeah, a long way to go until that actual Euros comes around. And we've got 12 more months to keep improving and, and keep developing as individuals and as a team. And could I just follow up on one thing you mentioned to Anton about the talks around kind of the calendar and maybe those little alterations. Specific to this campaign, I'm wondering if one of those alterations that you might like to see would be around the format for the, this, this qualifying campaign where we have the playoffs which I know you don't want to be involved in the playoffs, but the playoffs are over two different camps, over two-legged two rounds involving four games, whereas the men's Euros, they did it in one-legged fixtures recently, i.e. much quicker. And I'm wondering if that's an example of something that you feel could be tweaked in the future so that the, it doesn't take quite so many fixtures. Yeah, I mean, there's many things that are different in the men's game and the women's game, uh, not just at national level, but even you look at the Champions League schedule and lots of things there are different. Some things are for the better and some things are maybe not for the better. Um, but yeah, in terms of the playoffs, I wouldn't know as much about that. Um, but I think there's always positives and negatives. Uh, some teams might prefer that, you know, because if you go into one camp, you might be missing your key players. Another camp, you might be able to get them back fit. Um, so there's, there's definitely different things to it. And I know that there's a lot of people who've got a lot of, got a lot of brain power working on all these scheduling uh, situations at the minute. Thank you so much. And playoffs was one thing I wanted to ask you about, Serena. Could you maybe just sum up the determination in the group to not be involved in those, if you can, if you can get through automatically? How important would it be to be automatically qualified rather than needing that, that playoff route? Yeah, of course you want to qualify automatically because that means that we can play friendlies and then we can control that. Um, and that would be really nice and you can really... Of course, you want to win every game, uh, but you also can try out more things. Um, but... Yeah, that, that all depends on what we're going to do uh, this week um, and in, in, in June and, and July. So hopefully we do really well. And then we have uh, two camps after, after the summer break where we can uh, play friendlies. And if not, then we play playoffs. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. We'll move to the virtual element of the media conference and our friends from Sweden who are dialing in on Zoom. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your virtual hand and we will try and get through as many as possible. Are there any questions online? Okay, in which case we'll end it there. Thank you very much.